There are the baboons, everybody. We did eventually find them. They're climbing in a Zizifus tree, which of course has got many, many thorns on it, but it doesn't seem to affect them, and I think they're probably eating the dry fruits, which have oftentimes been used as a coffee substitute. They're actually quite nice to eat, just plain, not ground up and soaked in water and put through a percolator. Now that's exactly what they're doing. Now a baboon, you probably can't see there, is a probably about three times the size of a monkey. A big male baboon weighs about 70 kilograms, a big male monkey probably about 20, and these guys are proper entertainment. If you can get them in shot for long enough, you will see fighting, you will see flirting, you will see grooming, um, probably more than likely see a form of mating as well. They are endless entertainment if they're not too deep behind the bushes. Again, because you can kind of relate to their, how they behave. I love watching them, I must say. Now there will be one, I don't know if you can see that one, Vim. Um, maybe no, I think you're unsighted. There's one sitting up top, or just slightly higher than the others, with his cheeks full of food. And every so often one of them will go up high, sit down and just check around the place. There, that's him. I've spent so little time with baboons since I got to Juma because they just don't occur very often. But it's a real joy to spend a bit of time with them now. They seem to be coming back into the area, which is wonderful. Jumping around just like monkeys. So their social structure is very much similar to that of the monkeys. is a stratified sort of hierarchy between the males and the females. But the simple fact of the matter that the is that the larger you are as a male, especially, the greater your status. And so you don't want to be born small in a baboon troop. And it's interesting, you know, the closer you get to human beings, in other words, the larger the brain gets, the less, or size, I mean, still matters hugely in human beings, but the less it seems to be, or the, the luckier, smaller people can be. Oh, that one's making an enormous dump. That's just appalling. Thank you, VM, for, for filming that. Everyone should see that on the morn in the morning. It definitely is as if it's day eating. Anyway, back to my little story there. So, human beings, we know that uh, you know some small people have dominated many parts of uh, human uh, human history. The same cannot be said just about for any other animal, where the dominance hierarchy is almost always predicated by the size that you happen to be, and. It's interesting that the closer you get to human beings with primates, the less that applies. So in the chimps, for example, while size is unquestionably helpful if you're a male and you're trying to be dominant, your ability to manipulate the other chimps in your troop becomes even more important. And, of course, the largest brained primate, the human being, is exactly the same. Where size does matter, but if you're clever enough, doesn't matter if you're a little guy, you can still kind of succeed and dominate. If dominance could be considered true success, I suppose. Oh, a nice question from Winter is coming. Managed to get that from the final control. You say, is, are baboons dangerous? Uh, no, but they're not dangerous inherently. You know, they'll move away from us. If I got out of the car here and ran at them, they'd almost certainly scuttle out of that zizifus tree and run for their lives. But they can be dangerous in areas where tourists, and well, not necessarily only tourists, but where, any, where people feed them. And despite endless, repeated, constant warnings and beggings, for, especially in Cape Town, for example, where there are lots of baboons, despite the beggings, 
that people don't feed them, people do feed them, and then they lose their natural fear of us. And it's the same with monkeys. And then they can become dangerous because then if you don't give them what they want, they become ag aggressive. And an aggressive baboon is scary. They're very big. They've got much larger teeth than even a, a male lion has. And so they are terrifying and they're very, very strong. Much stronger than any human being. So they're not inherently dangerous, but like all animals out here, if you upset the sort of natural, uh, the natural state of things, then absolutely they can become dangerous. But they're certainly dangerous to animals that try and, uh, and hunt them. So leopards will very seldom take on baboons. Young males will try and catch baboons. They're about the only ones till they've learned a lesson. Baboons will turn on leopard and they will do some serious damage to them they are bigger and probably about as strong in many cases. Maybe just not quite as fast. That's a really stunning baboon sighting there, Vimpy. I don't think we've had one before, have mm -hmm. we? That was run away. Yes, that was run away. Just very peacefully having breakfast in the Zephyrus tree. Right, let's move on from them. There are actually